Coming up on this week's episode of TechSnap, everything is changing, yet everything is staying the same. We'll tell you about the big plans we have for the big show in 2019 and much, much more on this week's episode of TechSnap. Hi, everyone, and welcome to TechSnap, Jupiter Broadcasting's weekly systems network and administration podcast. Wes and I recorded this episode on January 2nd, 2019, and it's my last episode, Wes. We're going to miss you just a (laughs) whole bunch. Well, um, it's my last episode, but uh, that's not really what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about some of our big plans. We have a lot in store for the show. Uh, We have an opportunity to kind of take the show in a direction we could never have really done before. We've had an opportunity to have a think over the holidays about where we want the show to go and how we could take it up to the next level and sort of reflect on where it's been. And um, we thought we'd share some of our – we don't ever really have a show about the show. <laughs> we don't ever do that with TechSnap. Uh, that's because most of the time, like, something's broken on the internet yeah. <laughs> or there's a horrible security breach, and that's just more important. Um But we wanted to just have one of those moments, a meta episode, if we could, just to sort of prep you for what's coming. And so that way we're all kind of on the same page. And maybe we could start with looking back at where we'd been. If you look back at uh, the the whole TechSnap library, it's pretty crazy how much the industry has changed. And we dug out a little stat before the show just to get an idea of like, you know, if you were to stack all of the TechSnap episodes back to back to back to back. How long of a run that is. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Do you 21 have days, what? 19 hours, what? 39 minutes, and 33 glorious seconds of TechSnap. 21 days, 19 hours, 39 minutes, and 33 seconds. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, right? I mean, this almost is episode 393. So yeah. almost a month of nonstop snap. Just... I don't know if anybody should ever do that. If they'd ever suggest, <laughs> if, subject that would be an interesting that. experience. You, I mean, that's a that's a lot of Alan Jude. You'll probably be best friends at that point. <laughs> the show was long back then. You know, um, we were looking at too. Like one of our longest shows was two hours and forty three minutes, which is um, that's a marathon. It is, and in the world now, there are so many, so many great podcasts to choose from. A two hour and forty three minute podcast is a big ask. Yeah, I mean, TechSnap started in two thousand and eleven, yeah. and Unfortunately, feeling very old right now, that's <laughs> ages and ages ago. It's a totally different industry. Um, look at just the the news cycle around security breaches. When the show started, security breaches weren't really news. We didn't really people didn't talk about that. But then over the lifetime of the show, they kind of became huge headline news, like massive headline driving news. And now we seem we've almost on the other end of that trend. And now we're in a trend where it's like we're in an oversaturation period, and people are kind of tired of hearing about vulnerabilities again. Right. And it, and it's, you know, the, the the sad part is people have adopted some tools, right? Two-factor authentication is a lot more c- common now. LastPass is now a thing. People, your average jail might use a password manager. And still, we still have sites that have plain text passwords that get, that get hacked. People get compromised. Identities get stolen. So I'm sure the general public kind of feels like, why, why, are, we, why are we doing this work? It's been nice to see two-factor get more adoption. I still cringe when it's two-factor over SMS. That I mean, we've talked about that. That yeah. just really gets me. Um, but you know, one thing that I can positively say has really changed since we started this show, in a, in a, and it's a change in a really good way, is a common story on this program back in 2011, 2012, was flash vulnerabilities. We were talking Whoa. about flash vulnerabilities all the time. People's entire systems were getting compromised because of flash vulnerabilities. <laughs> it was like they, the whole network <laughs> would get owned. We were running basically weird, untrusted binaries right in our browsers all the darn time. Yeah, now that's just the craziest thing, flash. That's just, I don't think I, I don't I think. I mean, there's probably some still applications that we be. haven't been able to really replace. Yeah. Um, and and, and it, for, for what it did, and at the time, I mean, Flash wasn't all bad. It had a, it had a lot going for it. You could make some real, real smooth animations right there in the web browser. It's true. It's true. I don't think it was worth it, though. It was definitely not. Maybe for the cat videos. Maybe. And the other thing kind of around that same era that's changed now is it was really common for Windows worms and that type of malware to still be a thing. And people were going after low-hanging vulnerabilities in Windows, where now it's much more common to go in via the browser or maybe an exploit of an application on the operating system, or even more 
popular these days is go after the network router and get all the devices on the network, including Android and iOS devices. Yeah, right. You've seen uh, attacks stepped up. And as as more and more people have transitioned to using online accounts hosted in a data some, somewhere, probably running Linux, yeah. that's become a much more major attack target. Yeah. And I think along the same lines of uh, the takeoff of Linux and, and virtual services and uh, Linux servers, uh, the, when we first started the show... Automation systems were absolutely 100% a thing. No doubt about it. But to watch the industry so rapidly adopt different forms of automation over the run of this show has been fascinating because there's some areas where our IT industry, and when I'm saying our industry, I'm, I'm kind of thinking like enterprise data centers, business data centers, business IT. It just can move really slow in some areas. You know, everybody's still using PS2 in their, on their racks in some cases, right? It's, it can really be one of those things where if something's working and there's a methodology to it, if you can throw man hours at it or lady hours, good enough. Yeah, why are you going to go spend more money if you don't have to? Right. But not the case with automation. Like, to see automation really take off to the degree it has, um, I think is, a, is one of the best trends that I've watched because... Being able to reproduce your systems, being able to build them in a uh, measurable, secure way, um, and hopefully keep your systems more up to date, more properly configured, things like that is just, it's the, the network effect of that is massive. You know, I'm curious what you think on this, uh, having watched this topic for so long now. I wonder if part of that, I mean, I'm very much pro automation, of course. Yeah, and you are. <laughs> but I, I wonder too, there seems to have been like with, with more and more cloud technologies, kind of at the start, I mean, obviously the cloud was already a thing, but. You know, it was it was virtual machines and maybe some object storage and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And now we have how many different managed services is Amazon willing to willing to sell you, or even serverless itself? Yes, right. And it's so an there's, we, there's a we've we've gone up in the abstraction level, but also we have very complicated distributed systems. And well, if you if you don't have good replication or automation, you're kind of hosed. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. Like serverless is such a it's got to be maybe the most ridiculous term ever because there's nothing serverless about it. Nothing no. serverless about it. It's just somebody else's problem. Uh, and a lot of those somebody else's are the people that listen to the show. Because when we talk about cloud and we talk about serverless, there's two ways TechSnap can handle it. We can talk about it in the abstract, in the sort of centralized orchestrated management way. Or we can talk about it in the nuts and bolts, like go configure Nginx to forward this thing on, right? right. Like, there's so many yeah. ways this program can tackle it. And I, I think that's an interesting uh, foreshadow for how the program is going to be going forward. But when I hear terms like serverless, I think about I think about just all the listeners of this show who are sitting at their desk, terminaled into a system going, there's nothing serverless about this, man. There's just nothing about it. But I do wonder how abstract it can get. How how removed from the server process can a developer be or a company that's building an application? Could we get to the point years down the road where maybe the majority of stuff is serverless? And not, not all applications will ever be, you know, compatible with that kind of architecture, but more and more. I, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think we could see a point where serverless becomes sort of a standard way to build your applications? I don't know about serverless per se as we have it now, but yes, I think we will have rich abstractions that are connected by data pipelines that sort of flow through it and we have some control. How well that complexity increases, I think is kind of an open question because in some cases it can be a much simplified architecture, but you also, you know, it's not like the administration goes away. Maybe you maybe you pay someone else on the end. Yeah, but you know, it still takes a lot of time and energy yeah. to go configure all of your lambdas to get serverless to work for right. you. Right. That's true. There is that part of it. And then there's somebody at Amazon who's maintaining that, inf- or multiple somebodies right. maintaining that infrastructure. Now, maybe where some of the, be- uh, a large part of the benefit is, now you're thinking about the abstract level of design, and you're not worried about, well, did the cron job execute, and did that, did slash var fill up, and I have to go, you know, so it's true. a different level of problem. Hmm. But someone, at, at the end of the day, right, whether it's Amazon engineers or Google or you, you on your VPS, someone mm-hmm. does have to do that until we've changed the underlying architecture. Really, the overall, you know, just talking about trends for the show, um, since I've been on and off it, you know, my history was I started the show with Alan Jude back in 2011. We took it up to 300 episodes, um, and then Alan and I both decided to focus on other projects. He went off and got all super involved with FreeBSD, and, I mean, he's just been keeping crazy He's killing busy. it. Uh, and uh, the podcast network blew up. I did the vlog for a while while I stepped off of TechSnap, and I, I did that and got into video editing and really spent a lot of time learning how to do all of that, which has proved to be... Very, it's paid dividends across my my audio editing. Just how to frame a camera shot for for a documentation for shows. Or I mean, just like all these crazy things, I never thought I'd have benefits from from that break I took from the from the Snap program. Um, 
really kind of enhanced a whole other skill set that I had kind of been neglecting for a while. Um, but then when you came on board and you kind of got me excited about a lot of the things that uh, I sort of missed while I was off the program. And so it was a great opportunity for me to come back in and get my hands back into the stuff. We did some fun projects. Uh, but now, kind of going forward, it's time for me to step aside and have a better resource on the show that's more current with this stuff. Yeah, you got you got big responsibilities, lots of stuff in the work just network-wide. We, mm-hmm. we can't have you down in the weeds anymore. Well, and the truth is there's just people that are better qualified than I am. I mean, I did this for a long time, and I still I still follow it very closely, but... You know, and I'm, I'm happy to return and, and fill in from time to time, but we thought it would be better to, for me to step aside and have someone else join Wes that would be more qualified. Um, so we have decided that in 2019, towards the beginning of the year, we'll just start out 2019 right, we're going to bring on Jim Salter to the show, who was on before talking about Wirecard. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Jim is an author over at Ars Technica. Uh, he also has his own blog where he writes about some of the stuff he's doing, and he's pretty deep into this stuff. And uh, he's got a sharp mind. He's got a heck of a lot of opinions on this stuff. And, and he's, he's, I mean, he's doing, you know, a- admin and deployment work every day. day in, day out. Yep. Very excited about that. Bringing, bringing you and him together, I think, is going to be an awesome combination. Um, and I think maybe with that in mind, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting a little choked up. I'm going to miss the show. Uh, we talk about maybe where things are going. We talked a little about where it's been. And we avoided reminiscing about Bitcoin. And what it was to watch the birth of Bitcoin on oh this boy. show. <laughs> um, and instead, let's talk about where we're going in the future. Um, maybe what our hopes are. And these things are always, you know, flexible and changing. Nothing because, is fixed. Yeah, it's an, you know, as Jim joins the team and the guys uh, find a, a new rhythm, uh, things could change in their direction. But going into it, our intentions are to really try to bring the best possible on premises and cloud coverage with practical real world experience that when we when we give you guidance on something or give you advice on something or give you our thoughts on something I'm speaking for the guys now you know that comes from a place of a, a, a practical level headed deep experience with both premises on premises technologies and cloud technologies and trying to find the balance there and 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 cut through the hype talk about the stuff that's legitimate in all areas yeah i mean we would like to be relevant and and talk to the general case of making computers do interesting work for people. And it's all well and good if Amazon has a cool new service where you it's totally managed, it costs $1,000 a second, but if they do everything for you, but th- that's great. We should talk about the benefits, but we want to make sure that you also know you know how to properly maintain your SSL certificates or secure an SSH server. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And keep an eye on new developments that are coming out that maybe you know, you're busy in your day job, so you can't, you can't have everything on your radar. Well, Jim and Wes are tracking and watching just about all of it. And the thing is, is behind the scenes now, we've got a huge team at Linux Academy that's tracking this for their particular jobs too. So we've got a real network effect, that's my new favorite term today, that uh, is being applied to the new TechSnap program um, that will sort of be distilled and filtered down through Wes and Jim. And they'll take the they'll be the shepherds of the information and they'll, and they'll focus on the best stuff, in depth core concepts. Yes, I think that I mean that does touch on it, right? Some of the times, I mean, you and Alan did a great job of having a, a good deep take on the news, but a lot of times it was kind of in the trenches. Here's what's happening. These are the stories. Yeah, the vulnerability of the week. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I was trying to be more charitable than that. <laughs> It is what it was, though. And it was just what was hot back then. It was like, I can't believe this is happening. This, the PlayStation Network's been compromised. Oh Dropbox's been compromised, right? Hey, that was some great coverage. <laughs> Thank you. It was all Alan. Um, but I think, I think now, uh, a now lot we of the can value, be deeper, we can be deeper and take a, take, a, take a step back. And as you said, right, Jim and I, we're, we're following this. We're investigating, playing with things, and can distill, distill that to the things you actually need to know. So if you don't have time to, to stay up on whatever horrible new Intel processor problem comes up, We'll be there for you. Yeah, and if there's some new way of doing things, if there's a new concept in the industry, you guys are going to be thinking about yeah, it, talking you know, about it. Don't you know up. that the uh, Ansible author has a whole new automation system out, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, really, uh, we hope that you think of TechSnap throughout 2019 and, and beyond as an information-dense resource. It's part of m- the many things that you track for your job. Um we can be hopefully a resource to people that are following the industry too. They aren't necessarily in it, but are curious and fascinated by it. And most importantly, the people that are in the industry that are, are trying to deal with this stuff on a day in and day out basis. Yeah. And you know, you're not going to get a, an hour and a half long spiel of me at the terminal telling you how to install something, but we're going to make sure we have all the best links. We've already curated everything so that you know, you don't have to go search. You don't have to go down dead ends. 
just go find the TechSnap episode on the topic you're interested in, and we'll have a great starting point. Yeah, that's, I think, really important. Sometimes just getting people pointing in the right direction and maybe having them walk away with something that they wouldn't have picked up if they had just started re- researching cold on their own. Uh, but since this is what you guys do, and this is, you know, you know how to fill out information. It's, yeah, right. It's all well and good to be hyped about a, a cool new tool, but until you've used it in anger, you don't really know. <laughs> Isn't that so true? Oh, wow. That is, uh, there should be like, you know how the Ferengis have rules of acquisitions? There should be rules of IT. That is definitely one of them. That's so, so true. And all of this, like I said, is fungible. Um, there's always the, the feedback page at techsnap.systems slash contact. And I think something else that maybe we've touched on really slightly, but maybe we could just mention again, is both Alan and myself are still involved with the show. Yeah, it's a TechSnap community effort. It is. Yeah, so the the channel where the show's prepped, uh, we're all members of that, so we're all giving our input all the time. Alan and I are reading and responding to emails that people send into the shows. Um, so it's not a reduction in staff. It's different people on the mics and different people informing the, on what goes into the show, uh, but... It's still the whole team that's always been here. Yeah, too. right. And as you said before, like combine that with the the access to good resources we have at Linux Academy and and other great people we'll have on as as guests of the show. Mm-hmm. It's a team effort to try to get the best information right from the source, right to you. And I, I think you know the guys have talked about playing with uh, some different recording formats, maybe releasing multi part episodes, or, or you know all these different things that may or may not pan out. But these are things they're kicking around right now. It's in that stage. We're gonna they're gonna start start getting this officially put together. Uh, well, this week and start getting it recorded over the next week. And then pretty soon the episodes with Jim and Wes will start shipping. Like we're really close. Just finalizing some of the de- you know, the final details and things like that. And making sure we ask ourselves, well, if we could change it and make it better, how would we do that? Yeah, like let's we avoid make sure the we- false starts now. Yes. Let's, let's, let's just ask the hard questions. Like even the ones that maybe we don't like the answers to. And uh, I'm really, I'm kind of, I'm kind of proud of you guys for doing that because I think it's going to make a pretty good show. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I, I know I would love to hear from anyone who likes to reach out from the audience about the things you like about TechSnap, the things you want to hear more of, mm-hmm. or things that we've been missing in the past and should should think about maybe adding. It's going to be a whole new TechSnap, and it's going to be the same. Really. Because really it, it is, It's yeah. about looking back in the, you know, that's why we know how, that we know the whole runtime and the episode dates and all that, because we've been looking back at the back catalog and being like, what do we like? What do we really like from the back catalog? And how can we have that inform future episodes? And what can we do new and better and maybe you know, be a little more competitive? You know, it's funny. TechSnap's actually the show that, that got me really hooked on Jupiter Broadcasting. I, I found uh, Linux uh, Action Show first, of course. When oh, I was yeah? looking for a Linux show, I was like, oh, cool, <laughs> this is great. Um, but kind of felt, I was like, I wasn't watching it as much, and I was reading more news, Linux news mm-hmm. myself, so I was like, mm-hmm. well, I already saw this story. But the great explanations, Alan's diving deep yep. into, into the vulnerability of the week, that got me hooked. I was like, I can't yeah. find this content anywhere else. I want. I don't. I don't have the time. I don't need to go learn everything about this breach. Yeah. But there's someone there who's going to tell me. You know, that's a good question to put to the audience. What got you hooked on the show? And what would you like to see more of? I mean, that's simple. It could be one sentence answer, or it could be a multi paragraph mm-hmm. answer. We'll be taking that in and looking all of it and and making our plans and uh, figuring out uh, how to mix it all together and try to come up with something that we're pretty proud of. Uh, and I selfishly. Am looking forward to having a new show again to listen to. Oh, isn't I that really, nice? Yeah, like, right. I spot listen to all the shows I'm on, but I usually do one a week. So it's hard because I don't like listen because I'm. You can't hate, listen to the whole. It's, yeah, it's very painful. Yeah, I hate past Chris. He is such an idiot. Like I can't stand the way he talks. I can't. I can't stand. Never his says it as eloquently as he should have. Future Chris is so much better than past Chris. It's so for me, it's hard to listen to myself. So getting to listen to the Tech Snap show now that I'm not on it, way more enjoyable for me <laughs> personally, and probably most people. <laughs> Well, Mr. Payne, is there anything else we should uh, touch on in this sort of intermediary, intermitso episode of the TechSnap program? There'll be more. Um, keep subscribed, techsnap.systems slash subscribe. Oh, yeah, please do. I mean, and it seems like we'll be switching to a two-week cadence oh, yes. now. Right. Um, and that's in that is- interest of, of distillation. We want to make sure that the, everything we present to you is thoroughly researched and thought about and framed and put together in the best way possible. Yeah, yeah. So that's one of the things we said, what can we change? And if we're, if we're not trying to drive numbers for advertisers, but we're, instead we're trying to drive the most information-dense, best product, the thought was, well, let's get out of the hype cycle and let's pull back and spend time formulating these episodes. And uh, for those of you who want weekly content, there's other stuff in the works that'll be out soon yeah, on the network. Yeah, so there's, yeah. on the off weeks, there's, there, there will be other shows The amount soon. of content won't go down yeah. network-wide, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. There, there may be a couple of weeks before it's all spun up, 
you know, before everything's all launched. But uh, while TechSnap transitions to a twice a month format, there will be something eventually that's in the off weeks. Uh, it's just in progress still. And that's, uh, that's probably, besides me leaving and Jim stepping in, the second biggest change. Uh, but as long as you're subscribed, it doesn't really matter. You just get it whenever the episode's ready. And we hope that it's something that produces a better product. And again, like I said, things are fungible. We'll pay attention to the feedback, look at what we think the product is at the end of the day. And uh, we're always willing to change any of it, really. Uh, it's, a, it's a direct feedback loop between you and us now. Turns out that's who we're making it for. That's it. That's it. Well... Thank you, everyone, for having me on the show. Thank you for listening for either as short or as long as you have. Either way, it's really greatly appreciated. And if uh, you're in the area for April, come out and say hi to me oh, at Linux Fest Northwest. Linux Fest Northwest. Wes and I will be there, oh, and yeah. we're trying to put a bug in Jim's ear, too, so that way Jim could come down and, uh, I mean, maybe we even do, like, an in-person episode. Oh, oh, like, oh, you know, there. Start it off right. I'm just saying the Fest is a great time. And LinuxFestNorthwest.org is where you find out more information. April 26th through the 28th, I will be there, Wes will be there, and Jim may be there as well. And uh, we're also trying to twist the arm of that Alan Jew. He's got, like, Ooh. BSD events that book Real edit. strong arms, too, so. Yeah. Yeah, those Canadians are wily. They are. You've got to track them down and pin them down. Make sure you get them to commit. So it could be a, it could be a large tech snap reunion. We'd just be missing damage. And it'll be, be even better. With you. That's right. Yeah, that's right. If you want to go, linuxfestnorthwest.org. And again, that's April 26th through the 28th in Bellingham, Washington. But thank you so much for having me, and I look forward to listening to you guys in the future. It was great. So, yeah, yeah, now that you're no longer a host, I guess we should ask you, like, where do you want to send people? Where should people oh, go me? to find more Chris Fisher? Oh, me? Really? Oh, Ooh, thanks. Um, well, you can hear me on the Linux Unplugged podcast, linuxunplugged.com. Uh, and you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Chris LES. Thanks for having me, Wes. Oh, you're very welcome. Of course, there's the whole network at Jupiter Signal, or just going over to jupiterbroadcasting.com. Thank you so much for joining us and sticking with us. We'll see you in the shiny new world. <laughs>